Hey everyone, how you doing today? Thought I'd take another look at the workshop and see what was out there. I got a lot of very, very cool creations to see again. So I'm sewing all these in Reforged Eden. I believe one or two could be for vanilla. We'll take a look at the stats on that. The very first creation here is Wally by 11265KRB. And uh, this is a HV uh, tree cutter. Uh, very stylized, very stylized here with a particular uh, movie show. <laughs> oh, this is so, it, it, this is really, really, really cool. Um, wow, look at this. So, I, uh, I seen this on the uh, on the workshop this morning. I was like, oh, that looks cool. And it does. Look at this thing. This is, this is wonderful. So, we got, uh, we got some uh, interesting looking tracks on here. I like uh, how that's been done with the, uh, the block work and the, uh, complexities on the inside of the inner track area uh really awesome looking um headpiece over here uh that that that's that's really cool the way this is done uh the the joints and uh everything about it really that that is that is really really cool the eyeballs look wonderful the uh the graphics here on the front are very very fitting looks uh amazing as well i love what the author did here too uh using a uh, kind of a round to square piece over here to do the red circle behind the e that is uh that's that that's just really really cool as well um yeah the whole thing this is a a great great looking creation here let's take a look at the back side of it too wow yeah very very stylized love it love the uh the accuracy here i uh it's been a very long time since i've seen this but um uh it looks good it looks really really good and again uh really uh really love the uh interesting track work going on here uh the author had a uh a really cool uh like apc type of creation that was shown in last week's video and um uh, the tracks were done different on that one than they are this one so just another uh variation of track design here giving it some some depth like it could really uh really looks like tracks um and it's kind of kind of neat how the author just uh, purposely left off like these uh these blocks right over here to give it that rigid look which really really uh actually works for it uh very well so yeah this is this is cool here so i want to get get on board here too and see what's uh see what's going on obviously from its function um and it, it, granted it's uh, very much stylized to be uh you know wally here so that that is really cool but we do have a harvester and we do have uh looks like a minigun turret on there as well so all right let's get a board here i'm not sure if i should bother trying to go to to nighttime here or not probably not um so inside it looks like we've got a lot of stuff going on in here too a bunch of fuel tanks uh Got a couple uh, controller extensions, uh, constructor, pentaxid tank, O2 tanks uh, on that side. Some more uh, storage boxes, more fuel. I got a O2. Uh, and then we got a shield up on the ceiling over here, too. Um, looks like we got a sensor probably for the door back over here. Yep, automatic sensor. And then we got a pilot seat kind of right up in front. Oh, we also got the trauma uh, station and armor locker. So yeah, this actually has kind of a lot of uh, function in it, plus uh, a shield, um, which is, uh, that, that is cool. And this window here, it actually does work too. Um, it's interesting how everything blacks out except for that, that window in front of you and of course the, uh, the ventilator right above it. But uh, that is cool. So you can actually operate this in uh, first person to, uh, and have a, a viewable window port at least um which is pretty good i mean to get that it's not like the author could carve out a a big glass thing and have it uh, be accurate to the uh, the model that it is or the 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 replica or yeah but uh very very cool hv here i gotta say i've never said i i haven't seen anything like this before either um yeah really really uh imaginative and uh whatnot uh Nice, nice uh, recreation of this as well, too. It, it looks really, really good. The block work is uh, top-notch. There's just some interesting stuff going on everywhere. Even like this um, this inside area, how it's kind of using some uh, different, like, half, half and full blocks to...
create this uh, pattern in here, which is that's just really cool. It adds some more uh, uh, decoration into the hall of this, <laughs> into the hall. <laughs> I didn't know Wally had a hall, but uh, yeah, Wally does have a hall, and uh, <laughs> it's really really cool. So let's look at some numbers here, see what's going on. So we are unlock level 12, size class one. Uh, does six forward, three strafing, six reverse. Um, doesn't go up and down because it's a HV. Six fuel tanks, four oxygen tanks. Uh, 49 minute, 16 second build time. Um, doesn't use anything real special. Considering it has a shield in there too, it's uh, pretty pretty darn in inexpensive, I gotta say. It's uh, yeah, a little bit of cobalt, smidgen of neo and titanium, but other than that, just very uh, quick and easy to get in here. So we do have a detector in there as well. Makes good sense. So yeah, this looks like it could be a uh, uh, a worthy tree cutter. You kind of got that a uh, little bit higher stance with the uh, this, which is totally fine. I don't think there's too many trees that are below that height. Uh, so it looks like it would uh, chop up stuff. Let's take a look at some storage on here too. So we got an ammo controller and at 125, which is fine for the single uh, minigun turret. And we got a harvest controller at 125. So it doesn't look like there's any uh, container extensions onto these controllers to make them bigger. I, I could see uh, having the harvest controller a little bit bigger on it. But uh, other than that, you know, that still still works out just great there. So, yeah, that's, that, is, that, is, that is really, really cool. It just You don't see something like this too often every day. And awesome, awesome talent there on uh, building the body and the colors and the the track work and all the all the moving uh moving looking parts i won't say they they actually move it would be amazing if you could actually make that work you have some uh some rotors in there and have the head swivel around and raise up and down and things like that would be amazing but um anyway very 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 cool creation here and again this is the wally -E by 11265 krb so the next creation Ah, look at this. We're, we are right into Star Wars here with a MCI Millennium Falcon by Niwi Alex M. And, uh, wow, look at this. This has got some really, really stellar uh, block work going on in here. I'm thinking it's using structural frame blocks in here to uh, make some of the shaping going on. And that is a Reforged Eden only thing. I'm seeing that in this area, but I'm not 100% sure. Hold on a second. I want to, I mean, this is pretty amazing to look at, but I just want to see if we truly do have, yes, yes, they are here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me undo that. Just wanted to see in the hall. So it does use structural frame blocks. Kind of thought it did, but it's all painted white, and it's a little hard to, hard to tell, but you can kind of tell that there's no textures over some of the blocks around the uh, the front area and probably some other areas on this. But man, this looks like a really, really nice Millennium Falcon. Uh, the the block work on here is really top notch. I'm just looking at all the the intricacies and whatnot. I gotta point out this this pattern below here. So essentially, the the top of this is kind of going down to a uh, half block, and a lot of these patterns kind of are uh, built into a half block. But then it comes up. Uh, then it has this part that goes over the top of it and it makes this uh, ridge going on the, on the inside here um, where this uh, round part kind of overlays over the uh, the top part there. And I think that just looks really, really cool uh, because it gives you kind of a, a body line there that you wouldn't normally expect uh, with an, like an Imperium creation. Um, and also all the, uh, the block work going along the sides over here with the thin blocks kind of mounted up along the angles here. And that, that looks really cool. It's done with like a double layer of blocks. So you got a half block on top and a, a thin block below. And it just kind of puts in these insets there, which, uh, again, really adds a lot of detail to the, uh, the creation. And I love all this busy work in here, too. This, uh, I mean, the actual uh, ship in uh, Star Wars does have all that busy work going on. On the inside uh, areas between like the top and bottom hall, typical... Uh, feature in a lot of star wars uh, type creations which is a very good look too it uh really neat how it cuts into the side like that um this radar disc looks uh stellar as well yeah look at that 
just kind of looking at some of the block work going on in here and, and how this was arranged. That is that is nice. That is really, really nice. I like these little uh, little pieces up on the sides over here too. Yeah, a lot of lot of uh, detail work going on in here. Just looking at the hull, I haven't even got to the back side of the ship yet. So this looks uh, really cool too, this big round uh, half block uh, pattern going on on the sides here. Uh, of course, very fitting with the uh, Millennium Falcon. Um, and then of course we got our asymmetrical cockpit off to one side. I love the block work around it too. I like how this is shaped that way, going over a hull that's different. But uh, the author uh, kind of made some body lines in here to kind of make that all work out too. Yeah, again, really, really nice. And that is a really stellar looking cockpit. This uh, front uh, heavy glass in there, that just really kind of sets it off. And again, there's little detail things in here too, like these little uh, these uh, little corner pieces that are painted black in here to kind of match the uh, the window color. That looks, that looks, yeah, the whole thing, the whole thing just looks really uh stellar here and then of course yeah, yeah using the uh the structural frame box to get your three to one angle ratio so you can do just better looking um angles on here which is uh would be certainly more accurate to the uh original millennium falcon and let's take a look at the back here oh yeah look at that so this is running some uh, some decent sized thrusters back over here uh some of the other uh millennium falcons i've seen were using usually the smaller thrusters um and this one's kind of fitting in larger thrusters but it's kind of uh, uh making the space a little bit smaller in there because there's two rows of half blocks on the uh top and bottom of either side of that or i'm sorry thin blocks not half blocks yeah wow yeah, that looks really cool, too. Just a stance on how it's sitting on the ground here. Obviously, some pretty meaty-looking landing gear going on back here as well. Um, I like how they're kind of rotated around three different directions there on the back. And then we've got another uh, set of three. Actually, man, okay, so they kind of rotate around over here, too. That's cool. That's cool. So definitely... Uh, yeah, I like I like how the the thickness of the landing gear that just kind of makes it stand out more. There's more complexity there. It looks um, rougher and tougher, uh, where it could support a whole lot more weight and things like that. Let's get a good look at the top side of this too. Love the uh, the roundness going on here and these cut-ins that are over in these areas here too. That just really sets it off. So you got kind of a round layer here. You got a bit of an inset, at least on the back part here. Another like round uh, piece that kind of goes along at least the front side of that, and then of course uh, gets into a lot of more, a lot more busy technical work back over here. This is actually where some down thrusters are. Oh, that's cool. That that uh, fits in there really nicely. Um, of course, with a ship like this, you know, it's um, it's hard to kind of have your uh, a lot of uh, like thrusters exposed but what the the author really tucked them in there it looks like they've all got like a a line of sight to the outside of the ship but yet they're they're tucked away so they don't stand out uh very much at all uh, unless you're looking at it at particular angles but um and then lastly too you've got a little bit of red markings uh throughout the ship uh some of them are a little bit asymmetrically done uh, a little bit in the back there a little bit around here um but yeah this is uh yeah, that's amazing looking. Amazing looking uh, uh, SV. I do believe this is an SV. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Now, I, I'm really curious on its stats in the interior yet, too. But look at that stance. That just looks That just looks so nice. I got to say. That's a very, very pretty ship. All right. So, anyway, let me adjust the lighting on this one. And I will... Uh, I want to see what's going on on the inside. Uh, let's not try to go too dark with it. So it looks like uh, as soon as we walk in, we already got a, uh, a ventilator right over here, which is uh, actually a really awesome idea. Kind of well placed too. As soon as you walk in, if you're if you're uh, low on O2, you're you're all set up here. And it looks like we got the double ramp thing going on here too, which is I don't know if that's going to fold away or not. It doesn't really need to. But that is a good way to do a staircase on a um, SV because you don't have actual staircase 
parts to use or anything like that. Um, let me let me try to go a little bit darker yet. I've got that kind of weird sunset tint going on in here, which is making everything look red when it shouldn't. But uh, that's pretty dark too. Man, I wish I could find a nice setting somewhere in the middle here to uh, display this. I'll just kind of keep it like that. Kind of keep it nice and visible too. But it doesn't really have red in the interior. Again, that is the sun sunset lighting on the outside of the ship here. So yeah, this looks very, uh, very much like what you would expect inside the uh, Millennium Falcon as well. And I love this uh, like random uh, tile piece, kind of like laying on the on the floor over here, like uh, something was being worked on. Here's a here's a panel that's supposed to go over something in the area probably. That uh, we're doing some fixing on the underside of that with some wires or whatnot. Um, and then uh, a bunch of storage boxes here over here. Oh, wow, we're getting into... What is this? I didn't notice this from the outside. Oh, wow. So we've got a uh, we've got a bay that goes straight down on the ship here, right out the, uh, the bottom side. Oh, that's cool. Didn't expect that. And really cool looking display with the re reverse thrusters and some of the pipe work and all the detail parts in the general area here. Um, like the way the uh, the... Even these these ramp doors here are painted a uh, different color on the inside there, a couple couple different colors in there. Man, just look at the 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 corners over here too. We've got uh, man, just a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Look at all the the detail in here with the the pipes and the, all the technical busy uh, work. Ah. And this is just some weird corner that I want walked into over there. That's that, that that is wild. Let's get over to this side here. This is bigger than I thought it would be on the inside. This is all like engineering type stuff. Yeah, some thruster access ports, and again, huge amounts of detail everywhere you look. Wow, very nice, very nice. And then what do we got going on this way? Oh wow. So we got some generators back over here. But again, a really, really cool display. I'm kind of wondering here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go daytime again. I think. I just want to see a little bit better here. So yeah, just a huge amount of stuff in here. Kind of looks like this is kind of meant to put in a part over here, maybe because they can kind of see how the pipes would connect. Maybe it's for a uh, shield piece or uh, something along those lines. We do have some fuel in this room. just wild just looking at kind of some of the shaping going along the ceiling here too with the the orange uh, blocks up there or how it's they're kind of wrapped around differently and uh, unusual shaping on the front side of it and whatnot ah uh, yeah very nice very nice okay so I'm gonna walk around back through this way and let's take this other hallway and that is that no our entry door was here so this is not the entry door holy smokes Oh, this thing is way bigger than I thought it would be. Wow, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, this is the cockpit. Okay, so this is... Ah, yeah. What a cool-looking cockpit, too. I love the uh, uh, Han Solo and Chewie. You got a couple more seats in back, too, which is great. So you can bring some uh, CP-30 with you and uh, who knows who else. Maybe, uh, maybe befriend Bo Boba Fett or something. And back over here, it looks like we've got um, a whole lot of upgrade slots here. Kind of looks like for some generators, maybe. Would a generator fit in there? Looks like uh, so a slot over here. That's only five blocks, I think. For an, uh, no, actually, uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta remember this is an SV2, not a CV, so. Certainly looks like you're supposed to put something here, but I'm not exactly sure what that is yet. I wonder if there's any uh, info uh, panels or whatnot in there. But this is really cool. I like how the uh, there's this door section in front of here too, or maybe this is just uh, like decorative uh, uh, places here. But it certainly looks like it's meant to put some parts in there. And that so that's all going to the uh, the cockpit, and then we're getting into the center area of the ship over here. Wow. Oh, I love this, too. 
killer looking table set up here i love the uh the checkerboard texture on the top there and this whole seating arrangement going along the sides there that looks really good too like the uh the tan colors and in, into the mix in there very uh very very uh authentic to uh star wars uh on how the ship actually would look holy smokes okay so i gotta see what's in behind this door before i go further on so that's where our sh shield is so we got a shield room in here and our warp drive over there and again just the the busy work and the, the stuff going on the detail levels just insane love uh this is really cool too having the uh, the panel kind of like lifted out there you can kind of see some of the other stuff going on there how these are folded down kind of looks like they're working on something down over here and had to uh, remove some panels and again more uh more tech busy work in this area and all our cpu cores our main core kind of mixed in there that looks really fitting as well all right so we're back out to the kind of living quarters area of the ship here another missing panel down there more pipe work below the feet love these detail things in there i mean just just a lot of a lot of stuff looks like we got a probably a bed in this a uh, couple bed uh, areas in there and then we get into this part of the ship again a bunch more busy work over here a lot of pipes things uh access to another one of these slots over here maybe these are just for thrusters um trying to think what part on a sv would you put in here that's uh, this size i mean uh thrusters is about the only thing i can really think of uh, they don't the generators are uh, just one by two or one by three so it wouldn't need a, a size that big unless I'm just missing something here but uh, definitely looks like there's some uh, upgrade part slots in there more bedding in this section and the way it looks like we got kind of a a kitchen area over here and there's oh look oh I love how those constructors are put in there and yeah the fact that you can paint constructors with three different colors now that is a uh, fairly new feature and of course if, if you're if you're unfamiliar with reforged eden this uh food processor is the uh reforged eden part over here and um, we got a trauma station uh we got a loading we got a oh i like that old school lcd loading transmission up above there of course there's cargo boxes and other things going on in here too but really really nice looking uh ship inside and out yeah this is cool this is cool yeah, and those those constructors look really authentic too the way they are uh the way they are painted so yeah if you didn't know about the constructors i just really uh i figured that out uh a little bit last week uh it was brought up to me and uh it was like oh that's cool so you can make the uh the sv constructors look really cool by painting them multiple different colors and things like that so yeah wow very very nice work here uh that is just that's pretty stellar i love the uh i love that the author actually mixed in the uh, structural frame blocks here with the white hull they the, they go with it obviously you can't paint those uh the colors you might want you're pretty much stuck with uh the default color palette and you can't put textures on them but the shaping speaks for itself there because you just can do angles that you could not do uh with the vanilla blocks alone um which uh allows for just better overall shaping of especially creations that would use those angles like this which is really really cool all right let's look at some uh, numbers here so to start with we're unlock level 20 size class 12 uh, 145 for wow this thing is pretty quick actually i wasn't sure it's it's pretty big you know size class 12 for a sv is no no joke um it takes quite a bit of power to be moving that around but this thing had a huge amount of uh forward thrust but it actually has a quite a bit of strafing thrust uh lift thrust and down thrust in there too now, it looks like it's quite maneuverable actually 41 fuel tanks 29 oxygen tanks got five plasma cannons two minigun turrets two alarm sentries and a detector again uh alarm sentry i believe is a reforged eating only part but i'm not 100 percent sure on that one uh, 11 hour and 27 minute build time it is going to use a little bit of uh, estrium and zacosium uh, and some other things a little aluminum in there no big deal cpu wise uh, it looks like it would probably um now this no this is definitely reforged eating creation 
Um, but it looks like it's going to need like an auxiliary core or two added into the ship. I'm not exactly sure the count to balance that off, but uh, it looks like it would want a little bit more CPU. Um, not a, not a huge amount though. Pretty pretty uh, pretty light overall for a size uh, size class uh, 12 ship like this. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's look at your storage. So we got an ammo controller at 32k. It looks like, and uh, a container controller at 64k, and a harvest controller at 20k. And beyond that, it looks like a whole lot of boxes and other. Uh, other storage or smaller storage uh, items in there. And we do have our Pentaxa tank, obviously a shield and a warp drive. Take a look at the, the P menu, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, stat options here. So we do have a shield at 2155. We do have some P menu options. Let's turn on some of this. It does have an option for long range radar. Um, maybe that that goes in one of those slots, or, or maybe it's already on there. Is it already on here? I'm going to turn on everything, though, just, just for the heck of it here. And let's get back over here. So I don't see a long-range radar listed here, but it looks like it's kind of set up for that um, to get that in place, I believe, unless I'm missing it. Is it, is it on the bottom side? Yeah, the bottom side is super detailed, too. Love the, uh, the inset pipe work in there oh yeah the color colors down there we're matching the round on the top of the ship with a uh, round block formation on the bottom here and again yeah the authors um, used quite a lot of different colors on the ship as well I mean obviously it's more of a white ship overall but there's grays and there's tans and reds and some other oranges and all kinds of stuff going on in here and now we can see, uh, so we got the turret back over there. Yeah, the guns are hidden away pretty good on this ship, too. Uh, okay, here's our uh, here's our main weaponry over here. Uh, on the one side, but not on the other side, it looks like. Huh. That is interesting. Of course, it's, uh, I mean, it's, oh, there's a lot of asymmetrical features here. The whole interior is asymmetrical. Um, and then, of course, this feature over here with the uh, the classic uh, Min Millennium Falcon uh, cockpit. Yeah, very nice work on this. Really, really, really nice work. So, again, this is the MCI Millennium Falcon by Niwi Alex M. Very, very cool. So, next creation here, we're going to fly uh, back over this way for a second. I don't exactly have this displayed in the right environment, but this is the Polar Outpost 2 by uh, Procyon Lo Loader. If I said that right, I think I said it wrong in past videos when I've uh, showed creations by the same author. So I'm trying to trying to correct it, but I'm not sure if I said that exactly right. But uh, obviously this is kind of meant uh, to be spawned into a snowy environment, and I'm kind of uh, exactly opposite of that over here. But... Um, this is a great looking base. Um, I love the uh, the snow effect going on in here with the uh, the block work trying to um, you know look like natural snow formations and then the uh, more like snow like uh, in globs on the uh, the top of it as well. Uh, looks like this base is supporting a bunch of solar panels. I love this solar array back over here too. Uh, how they're uh, mounted up on these uh, pillars here with cool looking framework holding them all together. That looks pretty authentic. I definitely like that. And we've got a tower on one side over here, and just the uh, the base block work going along the uh, the the hull of this creation too. I love all the uh, all the changes. Uh, it's got like some beams over here and some pipes, and just a lot of detail in block work going on here. And then it kind of meshes into the snowy area below it. It's using some damage blocks in here too. You can kind of tell by. Uh, looking at these blocks over here, it's, uh, it's really great for that snowy looking effect. Um, even little little snow pieces kind of in parts of this over here, like this framework on the side. And of course up on the top over here as well. So from what I see, it looks like it's running eight solar panels on the outside. There could be more. Um, I just didn't see them yet. And then we also have some perimeter defense over here. I like how these guns are done up on this uh, 
on these blocks over here that gives it that nice looking uh, framework and it looks like they're kind of set up for uh, uh, some good defense along those sides of the base there which would kind of cover like three three sides of the base did I bury anything over here I don't think so okay yeah very nice very nice all right, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to adjust the lighting again. Sorry, this the lighting thing doesn't adjust very nicely. It's either too dark or tinted to one color or the other. But uh, check out the hangar area. I like the hangar. A lot of a lot of detail going on in there. Got some different textures going on. Uh, texture lights on the ceilings, backed by real lights. And some utility function over here with our armor locker and O2. Some cargo boxes along the hangar. Uh, looks like we've got some upgrade slots for, I would believe, some furnaces back over here. Uh, so it looks like a slot there for furnace. Oh, this is a uh, fuel and O2. And another slot over here for another furnace. So that's uh, that's really practical. That's a uh, uh, basis on the only type of creation that can use the furnaces. So it is, uh, you know, if you're going to build a, a decent a decent player base uh yeah definitely i think furnaces would be something you'd really want to focus on uh, at least allowing slots like the author did here so you don't have to have uh, a bunch of cpu or anything like that but you can pop them in when you want them which is great so looks like what is that i guess just a uh, slot maybe for a i don't know uh one by two part could be a pentaxa tank could be uh, a lot of things actually and a shield part and we got, uh, looks like some production over in this room. Oh, wow, we got a farm, too. There's a lot in here. So, yeah, uh, a second area for your, here for a uh, constructor or deconstructor. Um, then we've got, looks like a uh, farming section over here. Really cool. So, it looks like, uh, what do we got, 30, 36 grow plots, I do believe. And our elevator's up there, so I'll, I'll go upstairs in a second here. I just want to see what was off in here. It looks like just another... Oh, this is probably just another area for a uh, constructor or deconstructor. Okay, so two additional areas for that. You could probably even pop in uh, a couple of small constructors in here uh, pretty easily as well. And uh, all right, so then we got our uh, our farming section. There's probably, a, probably an option somewhere to turn on those grow lights too. It might be in the P menu section i'll check that in a second here so let's take the elevator up and it looks like it goes up a lot higher than i thought it would too so over here it looks like we got a small generator room um kind of looks like they're left uh to be expandable in case you want to put in the uh the one by three uh generators the little bit more powerful ones but it doesn't need them uh currently at least maybe after you put in furnaces and the constructors you might want uh, larger generators maybe i don't know i'd have to see how that works out with the power we got another floor over here this is cool another like a tech room we got our main cpu core here and it looks like we got some slots over here probably for some uh, cpu blocks uh, a couple improved cores things like that i'll have to see what the cpu on this uh base is it doesn't look like it's going to be too much actually it looks pretty light on what i'm seeing i'm not seeing any parts installed that would uh cost a lot of cpu Oh, look at this. we got a whole med bay up over here, too. I like how this uh, this tower is really utilized. It's more than just uh, decoration on the outside of the, the base. It's actually got a lot of rooms and functions going on in here. So you got a full medical bay. got our uh, uh, all our specialized pieces. And we also got a toilet in here. Um, and uh, I was looking for a shower. I don't see that in this room. Maybe I missed it. It could be behind a different panel, or maybe there's one in a another location there and then we get up to this top floor and which is a, uh, a crew section over here so a place to uh, chill and eat got a nice view of the surroundings um, even got an alien plant in there fridge food processor oh there's our shower okay and we got a shower up here too so it does have that a couple of uh, uh, bunk bed over there Oh, this is nice. This is really nice. It's, uh, I mean, it looks really good. It's got all the function you'd want. It's got uh, expandability in the places that you'd want expandability, like furnaces and more constructors. And you can add in some CPU blocks, things like that. Well, let's take a look at some numbers here. 
And to start with, uh, unlock level 15, size class 2. 10 fuel tanks, 4 oxygen tanks. does have two stock minigun turrets in there. Uh, two hour and 36 minute build time. It's using concrete. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, concrete for the grow plots, which is totally fine on a base. Actually, probably not a probably a good choice. It's using a lot of uh, stone in here too, so I believe most of this base, probably not every block, but a lot of this base is actually built with uh, concrete, which is a, uh, a really good material for a base. It's, um, it's the only uh, the only kind of creation you can use concrete on as well, but they do provide more hit points versus steel blocks uh, for the cost. So it is a, an advantage to use concrete on a base. Side effect is you do not have access to the steel texture set so there's a lot of textures you can't do on the concrete blocks now uh, but concrete does have some unique texture textures to its set as well let's take a look at your storage so we got a cargo a and that's a big one oh 600k there cargo b also 600k a deconstructor because that's probably a a box i think Ammo bay at 14, that's probably an ammo box, and then I'll be on that. So basically, yeah, yeah, between these two here, you got a, uh, geez, one point, yeah, you got a, you got a lot of stores, two 600Ks, and uh, beyond that, just a little bit more. Mostly, I think uh, the rest are in boxes. I'm not sure if this one is or not, though. I'm not 100% sure if there's a box that has 16K in it. Uh, there might be, though. Yeah, again, very, very nice. Let's, uh, one last thing I wanted to look at here is see if we got any P menu options going on here. So we do not have a shield. Um, um, I am seeing P menu options for constructor, deconstructor, food. So you basically a lot of power setup things. So you can turn things on and off. Here's our grow lights. Um, and that's, that's really cool too. So you can really, uh, shut things down when you're, um, and save on energy. Not to mention it does have the solar as well on here, which is going to, uh, be a nice kicker there too. Allow you to grow uh, grow plots, uh, probably just from solar energy. I'm sure if you uh, start uh, doing a lot of production, you need the generators and stuff in there too, especially with furnaces. But um, yeah, it can operate uh, really cheaply as well. So yeah, just yeah, very nice base. Very nice base. Uh, looks great. Uh, sorry that I displayed it in the total wrong environment that it was kind of designed for, um, but uh, it looks good even here i mean that the, the, you did awesome work on the snow in there too and that's a nice added uh touch in there so again this is the polar outpills 2 by Prokeon loter <laughs> but it's the name a little bit different again awesome work awesome work all right so the next creation um we got a a little one over here look at this little, little guy over here this is the uh Bashi Wasteland series by Jay Drafton. And this is like a little ball circle deal. I love the uh, the shaping on it. It's just uh, kind of like a, a sphere going on in here. And the really cool LCD thing going on on this uh, really cool like cockpit glass area. Love the landing gear too. It's got four landing gear kind of all symmetrically placed along the, the bottom side. So you can see a couple retractable turrets on the sides over here. And then again, it's, uh, of course, uh, going by that uh, Script HD's Wasteland uh, series uh, color and uh, theme. And it looks very, very appropriate for that, too. That's cool. Yeah, de definitely like uh, all the different colors and, and things going on in there. So we got some uh, reverse thrust over here. Yeah, just a, it's just a ball. It's a ball with some uh, kind of cut out and it has these pieces kind of extending out from it which again looks really really cool that's neat that's neat it's small too really small all right so let's see what's going on on the inside here um i don't know if we have lights so oh, we do have a light in there so let me try again um sometime maybe i'll try to see if i can find a planet or something where i can adjust the lighting and have it like not too dark at night or something like that. I can turn on effects like fog, but that could mess with other visuals. So inside here, looks like we got some information on uh, uh, upgrading for uh, Reforged Eden. Uh, oh, okay. It tells about bringing it into vanilla, like what you would have to do to make it uh, vanilla compatible, which is great. Um, 
Sounds like you can put in a shield in here and pentaxa tank. So on the inside here, we've got, oh, no, we do have the pentaxa tank right there. So we got a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. We do have the shield in here ready. Duh. All right, so we got Wi-Fi, uh, storage controller right on the ground there, generator on the side, fuel tanks, cargo box, uh, our main CPU cores up there, detector, armor locker, fridge. This is, it's dense. There, there is a lot of uh, stuff going on in here. Um, and then we got O2 armor locker. Yeah. And then, of course, our really cool-looking pilot seat. I love that LCD ring around that because it matches the whole roundness of the uh, the cockpit in the first place. Cool-looking uh, cockpit seat there. I like the uh, extra block work on the back there just to give it some more detail. Some uh, decals over that as well. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. All right, so... Let me, uh, let, me, let me adjust the lighting a little bit more here again. Yeah, that's cute. Nice. Nice nice creation. So, we are unlock level 12, size class 1, uh, 67 forward, 14 strafing, 13 lift. I'm sorry, 33 lift, 33 reverse, 6 down. Uh, 1 detector, 4 Gatling guns, uh, 2 retractable mini uh, minigun turrets. 48 minute and 53 second build time. Rarest thing in here would be just required for an SV, uh, Cobalt and Neo. So extremely inexpensive as well. Uh, we do have those other guns in here too, which, uh, oh, they are retracted in there right now. Speaking of that, let me just see if we, okay, so we don't have any P menu options. So let's just turn on the turrets and weapons here too. There we go. So there is our retractable miniguns and our minigun turrets. So. Yeah, very nice. Looks like it would really uh, chew drones up uh, and things like that. Ground, ground troops and drones pretty pretty well. All right, so let's see what else do we got going on here. So we looked at that. CPU-wise, really inexpensive. I think this is just running a single basic CPU core in here besides your main CPU core, bringing it to 12,000 CPU, and it's uh, designed to use exactly that and have a look. Just a little bit over, about 50. Very nice. And let's see, storage. So we got an ammo controller at a little over 5K. And beyond that, a couple boxes, it looks like, which is really appropriate for the for the ship, too. It's, uh, it looks like it's kind of a, a interesting gunship. A low-cost, low uh, like... Yeah, we have projectile gunship, um, and it looks like it would do pretty good for for what it's designed to do. And again, very pretty looking. Um, love the love the round roundness in it. That's just cool. All right. Well, one last thing. I just want to see if there's anything I missed in here. Uh, we do have a shield in here at 690 as well to start with. But again, yeah, very very cool creation. The uh, Bashi, a Wasteland series by Jay Drafton. Awesome work on that. What pretty creations, man. Well, it's, it's cool to see all this stuff here. So the next one, we're going to get into something pretty pretty big. Um, and actually, I got a, uh, kind of out of place here. So we're going to shoot up here. And let me get... Uh, looks like I failed to put some, some fuel in here. So we've got the Lex Imperialis. 40k Navy frigate by Gore Moran. Now this is not Garman. It is uh, G O R M A R E N um, on the author name. And we're going to the uh, Warhammer 40k here. Uh, another creation. I've been seeing a lot of Warhammer creations as of late, uh, which is really really cool. They got a very uh, unique ship design, very different than any other sci-fi franchise out there. And this, uh, yeah, this looks really, really cool. Uh, I didn't put this one on the ground. Obviously, you can see why um, it would have uh, not worked out too well if I would have tried to do that. But, um, yeah, again, like uh, like big uh, ship-like uh, uh, technical frigates, uh, kind of uh, cathedral-like in places. Uh, huge amounts of detail on the, on the body here or the hull. I love the shaping too. Uh, this this is really cool. This extension coming down there. Um, 
Yeah, it's just neat. Obviously, it's meant for space and not to be uh, sitting on a planet like like it is right now. But, oh, yeah, look at that thruster pack back over there, too. A lot of thrusters. Running eight of those um, Excel forward thrusters on there and a cool-looking uh, block work. Very, uh, very unique block work going around here and the texturing, too. It kind of looks, uh, again, trying to, you know, it, uh, these are tend to look a little on the beat up side a little a little rusty in places and that is part of the uh the theme and the author did an awesome job with that and i love all these just interesting decoration things like look at the, the blocks over here with the it just kind of like a pattern with the the texture lights on the sides uh this uh difference over here on this particular row up next to these uh these big like cathedral like windows and oh hey i know where the uh the shield is on this ship yeah uh, there's just a lot to look on and add in here oh look at the uh the big texture light thing going on, on the this this section here that that actually looks really cool too it's just kind of because it, it's not doing it everywhere on the ship it's just that that spot there but we've got some other uh like texture lights in here that are kind of matching the same color but a little differently done uh, so it all kind of fit together to make a nice looking uh, theme and then some other color texture lights over on the sides here and a cool looking uh, weapon mount over here too it's actually holding some real guns but uh, yeah it looks uh, very solid I like this nose as well the uh, the slope going down there it looks uh, yeah, it looks like it's quite armored on the front and we got a lot of weaponry going on the side areas here um and the front uh, very nice and uh then we got our bridge section over here and it looks like we got a landing pad out behind there but this is just really really unique look at the the ceiling height on there and the big uh big window uh again kind of like a cathedral kind of window which is uh yeah Definitely a characteristic of a Warhammer type of ship. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Just uh, insane amounts of detail everywhere going on here, too. And then we got a couple landing pads back over near the bridge. Looks like there's uh, access ways to get into the bridge from the landing pads. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, let's uh, have an adjust the lighting here. This is going to... This is going to light up at night pretty good, too, anyway. But uh, we'll take a tour through the inside. Uh, if I'm too dark, I'll, uh, I'll ramp up the lighting again. Actually, it's... Yeah. I'll just kind of keep it somewhere in the middle there. Almost daytime. All right, well, no big deal. I really try to do that. I really try to show the accents of... Uh, uh, the interior lighting and things like that because it can really change the appearance of a creation. But the lighting environments planet side have been not very nice for that. I've tried a couple different main planets, but either one kind of has some issues. So, yeah, okay, so we come in from the uh, the landing pad here, and uh, we get up into the, uh, the top center first-person bridge. Now, it could have another bridge in here, and I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, but uh, this would be your kind of uh, uh, first-person bridge sitting way back in the hall. Probably a pretty safe spot if you're going to get into some combat. We also have a uh, door going out this back way here. And uh, kind of a... Uh, oh, this really... Oh, I didn't expect it to go so far here. So this kind of gets us into the uh, the main hall here of the ship. we got a thruster access room over here. And, uh, yeah, we're looking out some side windows there. Got more staircases going down to another deck. Oh, I like the, uh, I like the, uh, light going on in there, kind of the alert light. Let's go down the staircase here. Oh, yeah, wow, this goes way down there. Yeah, very, uh, very engineer-like. I like the, uh, that's cool. I like all these catwalks and balconies and things like that in there. I wouldn't really call them balconies, but, yeah, it's just elevated, uh, Walk surfaces, more thruster access ports over here. And I'm going to just keep on going down on the back side here. Um, yeah, a bunch of thruster access rooms. 
And it looks like that's as far down as it goes. Oh, we got a fusion reactor in here. Oh, look at that. Ship means business. And it looks like storage controller over here on this side. And, uh, yeah, another storage controller there. And uh, does this go down any further on this side? It doesn't look like it. It kind of looks like it's separated. No, it, it, go, it does go down further right here. So, yeah, I'll just, let me just follow this around a couple more floors. I like how this is done. I mean, it really feels like a staircase in a, in a building of some, some type. Realistic staircase, I mean. And we're still not all the way down. All right, so let's head this way. And this kind of gets us into the fusion reactor room over here. So I already know this is probably going to have a pretty big shield. Look at this. So we got some small shield parts in here. I like all the again, I like how this uh, this curved uh, walkway kind of goes uh, looks above that area there. That that's cool. Then we get into the center part of the ship here, and just a lot of detail going on in here too. This probably loop back around that way. Yep. And uh, man, a lot of uh, a lot of levels or decks on here. So this whole room here looks like it's dedicated for uh, small shield pieces. Looks like it has all eight of them installed. And let's head this way here. Man. Just a lot going on. A lot to see here. I like how some of the stuff is done to the, uh, the, the two different texture lights. Uh, kind of uh, making this formation on the ceiling. That looks really, really cool. Yeah, there's quite a bit of things that light up on the ship here. Uh, very unusual texture uh, styling, too, but it's really fitting for uh, the type of creation that it is. And we got some big uh, observation windows off to the side over here. Cool look in formation with our main shield right in the center of this uh, room. Did see that from the outside. We kind of walked down into this area. Again, really, really tall ceilings. Um, a characteristic of this this type of uh, ship. And another balcony kind of looking over the, the, the this area. Wow, there's a lot of uh, uh, Z-axis or your vertical axis on this ship kind of getting all around here. And I don't think I'm supposed to be walking up here, but man, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to see. That's cool. All right, so let's go down the staircase to this this level. Like a big formation. It almost looks like a big eye there, doesn't it? Um, in marble. Like, I didn't see that texture used anywhere else yet, but right there. And it's kind of, yeah, like a big, big eye. Interesting. Okay, so that doesn't go forward that way anymore. Maybe it doesn't, because I wouldn't doubt, I have looked at a couple other of these ships, and once you get to the front side, they're pretty much all armor. Um, so, maybe it does not carry forward any further forward here. But uh, So we got some more thruster access ports over here for strafing thrusters. And let's uh, keep on walking on the bottom here. I think this area is different here. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I'm outside now. Didn't expect that because uh, the back of the ship's way back over there. But yeah, this is that uh, makes sense. This is that the part that kind of hangs down there a little bit. Um, that's wild. That is wild. So I'm. I don't know if I missed something on the ship on the inside here, but yeah, it's really really cool. I mean, obviously a lot of work putting into this. Um, let me just fly around on the front area to see if there is uh, okay so wow look at this oh we got solar in here too but yeah we've got a big wall of like leg shot blocks and other things um layers of it so it's really set up to take uh some heavy uh, heavy abuse from the front side um of this ship here yeah that's a lot to shoot through it looks like we've got decoy parts in here too like a small generator Things like that, and rows of leg shot blocks. And then it finally gets in, and then solar panels and more leg shot blocks. 
and even up on the top side here. And then finally, it looks like we're starting to see a little bit of the storage, and then it gets into the, the inside of the ship. Okay, so there's nothing more to see on the front side there. Just a, a lot for the AI to shoot at, or enemy players uh, to shoot at there. Yeah, very cool. All right, let's look at some numbers here. So we are unlock level 25, uh, size class 11, 117 forward, uh, 43 strafing, 58 lift, 29 reverse, 14 down, seven, uh, four oxygen tanks, eight fuel tanks, 27 hour and nine minute build time. Um, obviously, it is running a fusion reactor in here. So uh, it does need like a, a reactor core and some other parts for that. Um, it does use a fair amount of estrium as that goes in. Again, it's a more of a combat-oriented ship. It does have a, quite a loadout of weaponry on here. Some uh, advanced laser cannons, positron, some uh, regular cannon turrets, uh, quite a few missile turrets, so even an artillery turret in the mix. CPU-wise... Uh, looks like it's kind of set up where it doesn't have uh, CPU blocks installed at the moment. Um, so you would uh, probably first have to get it to a Core 9 setup to bring it to 2.1 million CPU. And then beyond that, uh, it would need some quantum or auxiliary cores or other means to add CPU into the ship. Uh, but it would need to be balanced off. I figured that. I, I'm not sure if I've ever seen a creation that has a fusion reactor in it um, that does not need some kind of auxiliary or quantum cores. Um, that's usually almost a, a give me there. So our stock shield, it looks like it's 15,000. We do have some P menu options for battle stations and gravity. Let's take a look at your storage. So we got, uh, looks like three ammo, or yeah, three ammo controllers at 320 a piece, which is, yeah, that, that, that's cool. Can uh, do the long haul, the, the heavy battling with that, especially with a, a decent amount of weapon around here. And beyond that, it's uh, got a cargo uh, controller at 488k, and then our Pentaxa tank. So pretty much straight to the point. It's not really trying to do much in um, other uh, other things like farming or things like that. It is uh, a combat ship with um, a very heavy especially front uh, armored hull on it uh, so uh, that's that's very cool so yeah great looking ship i love the uh design the details the all the stuff about it very very cool so again this is the um oh, what just happened to my, my my screen wigged out on the side i apologize for that this is the uh lex imperialist 40k navy frigate by uh gore moran um if i said that i i probably said the name uh wrong and i keep on i'm i, I almost want to pronounce it like garaman but it's it's different uh, two different authors so uh very very cool ship again so all right the next creation here is another big one um this is Oh, man. Okay, so this is the BFTC uh, Justic Ore by BFTC Sharpo. Uh, I hope I didn't screw up the name too bad. I probably did to some extent, though. But here, let me adjust the lighting, get uh, daytime full on here again. And look at this son of a gun. This is a big one. Holy smokes. Wow, yeah, it's kind of, it looks like uh, it's going to be a carrier type of ship here. I love that, I uh, love that bridge in the back area here. I believe this is, uh, I don't know for sure, but I th it certainly kind of looks like it is uh, Star Wars oriented uh, with its uh, design ideas and things like that. It does have some characteristics of that, but I don't know if I'm correct in that. Um, but it certainly kind of looks like it would fit in Star Wars really well as a, uh, as a ship there it's kind of got that uh that cut in on the uh the angled sides it's not necessarily like a wedge shape but kind of is especially on the front side um but it it also looks like a uh like a wide body carrier and really cool uh shaping and block work i noticed the uh, the author was using a couple different colors here for 
uh, like putting in some gray panels in with like the white panels along the ship, which is uh, really, really cool. Um, to see what the, the color setup looks like on that. Cool looking bridge back over here too. This whole uh, front area looks really, really nice. I like these these cut-ins going into, uh, looks like a big hangar area down below. And we also have some solar panels installed up on the top here and some uh, perimeter weaponry so far. Again, uh, yeah, certainly looks like a carrier type of uh, creation, which is probably more about drone defense than um, hardcore like combat operations. But I'm not so sure because back over here we do have some actual... No, those are... Ah, that's just fake. That's antennas. Never mind. Never mind. So, yeah, it does look like it's more of a perimeter drone defense set up on here. Really cool block work, though. I love uh, the whole the the whole body kind of all put together as in one piece. Looks really, really cool. Oh, and look at that thruster set up on the back side. Yeah, that looks really cool. like how the author did this. Big ol' uh, Star Wars like, uh, yeah, this must be Star Wars. Uh, big ol' thrusters back over here, bunch of forward thrusters. And uh, yeah, these are kind of like fake ones. Uh, maybe, maybe you can actually put real thrusters in there. We'll have to see on the inside. But kind of looks like you might be able to kind of like uh, what's been done on these center ones over here. And then there's a bunch of smaller thrusters in the, uh, the back there too. Yeah, it looks really cool. I like how the... Uh, this overhangs over the thrusters, the angled setup against Star Wars characteristic uh, uh, type of stuff. Star Wars really has some cool looking ships, I, I must admit. They are, I'd probably say, my favorite for star uh, for sci-fi franchises for overall ship design and things like that. Um, I do like a lot of others, though, too. But yeah, this looks ah, super impressive. Love the, uh, the thruster arrangement on the back there. Um, the whole, the whole ship, there's just a lot of detail things going on. Like even like this, these pieces over here kind of look like they would be like a, some kind of gun turret or something like that, or just, uh, certainly looks like that. Um, but it's just, you know, decoration, at least right now, I guess you could probably actually put some legit launchers on here if you wanted to. Looks like it would have a, a clear line of sight over the, the front hull of the ship there, or the top area. And again, that, yeah, that bridge. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, this is totally Star Wars. Here's another big-time Star Wars uh, thing. Um, just the whole, whole way the bridge is uh, set up here. That is cool. Yeah, this, uh, I don't know, radar dome or sensor dome, and then you got your regular radar on the other side. Yeah, cool-looking area. I love the glass work up here, too. The uh, kind of re, uh, inverted angle. That looks really appropriate. And it kind of looks like we got a couple landing pads back over here. A few landing pads, actually. It looks like four smallish uh, landing pads, or at least areas to walk out onto the hall, but certainly look more like landing pads. Yeah, definitely. A, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. It really goes with the uh, Millennium Falcon over there. I should have parked that inside this ship, but I didn't realize it. Uh, that would have been kind of neat to see <laughs> whatever we'll go through it. Yeah, cool looking ship. Very cool looking ship. One thing I was curious about, um, I just want to look at this real quick, is the color palette on here. Oh, it looks like it's 100% default. So, I gotta assume that um, that's that color, and that's that color. So I was just kind of curious. Uh, I don't know if the author knows this, but you could. If you want, not that maybe maybe they that they want the grays exactly that how it is, but you could kind of tailor this other color to kind of do like an offset gray here, like something like that. I love the I love the fact that the author painted things uh, differently, but you could uh, manipulate it a little bit like that too, so they uh, it's not quite a uh, so much of a contrast uh, blend between one shade and the other. Uh, but I noticed that there wasn't any custom colors set in the uh, the palette here. You can totally do that. Um, I don't think. Oh man, can I undo it though? <laughs> let me let me let me try to let me try to undo that. Uh, no, it's not going to let me undo that. Here, I'll just fix it. So I'm going to put it back to how it was. Sorry about that. I just wanted to kind of show that as a option. 
And you could do that. And I probably, uh, I don't know if I'll get back to the identical shade. It's pretty close to there, though. Something like that. Okay. Sorry about that. I just, I just, I just had to do it. Um, but yeah, it's, that's really cool how it's just painted differently in, in different spots like that. Give it that uh, uh, different panel kind of look thing going on there. All right, so here I'm going to adjust the lights and get a board here. And uh, yeah, certainly looks like it's going to have a lot of carrying capabilities here. Oh, man. I wish I could find a planet that doesn't do this pink thing. Because that can really be offsetting here too. Here, I'm going to... I'm going to try one more time here. Get this set a little bit darker, maybe, in this case. And if I go full on dark to, to do it, then it's just too dark. And it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to light the area up to have it uh, super bright and everything. Here, put away the gun. All right. Yeah, all right. I'm going to go. Sorry. Yeah, I'm in future videos. I might just stop doing this lighting thing. I I, I kind of want to keep doing it, but it's been really annoying. Just can't find a setting that works anywhere in the game, actually. So it's been kind of a problem. So yeah, cool looking hanger on the inside here, spacious, spacious hanger. And then obviously we've got these big top uh, drop or bays to to land something uh, directly in from the top side, or the front, or the sides. Got a lot of different ways in and out of this hangar. And a lot of room here. I like the little touch there with the, the NPC. It looks like we got some uh, passenger seats in the area in case uh, people are chilling down in the hangar and uh, going to fly the ship around. It's a nice thing so you don't have to run all the way up to the bridge or some other place. Got a central elevator getting up to the top deck here. So I don't think that goes on the inside, or maybe it does. That goes somewhere, doesn't it? I thought it just was going to go up to the flight deck, but uh, I think that is incorrect. What is this? Oh, wow. It does kind of go into the interior space up top here. Wow, look at that. Very Star Wars looking hallway here, too. And we've got a bunch of rooms off to the side here. I'll, I'll hit those on the way back. I just want to walk all the way up front here first. Yeah, a lot of crew members over here. Uh, air traffic controllers, well, space traffic controllers. And looks like we've got kind of a, oh, yeah, crew room over here. I like, I like how that's done, too, with the, the rounded side uh, block work in there. And it's even got some uh, some function stuff in here with, for the crew members. And looks like we got another crew, no, yeah, another crew room on this side. And a place to sit and eat, too. Fridge. Yeah, they got some stuff going on in here. And let's see. And then we're... Uh, okay, so we came in on one of these. That's interesting with the way this, this hallway setup is done here. That's going to go back down to the hangar. So let's just keep on walking forward here. And it looks like another crew room. Probably uh, one on the other side, I'm guessing, right there, too. Quite a hallway here. So this room is a little different. Looks like more of a storage bay room here. And on this side. Little little things like I like the angled wall over here, too. That's just cool to see. Just little stuff like that. Uh, then we get into a... Um, uh, Oh, bridge-like area, but not, not necessarily a bridge. Just uh, a lot of people working out in this area. Uh, this might have a, a specific purpose. I like how these are uh, arranged here. They kind of look like they're getting some things ready. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. Love the uh, the red texture lights up here as well. Um, kind of with the white lights and the, and the red there kind of gives it that, uh, I don't know. It certainly looks Star Wars, put it that way. Got some uh, interesting block work going along the sides of the hallways here. Oh, yeah, getting into some uh, some piping and things like that. Very nice. Uh, so we can go up. So I'm going to keep on going back this way. Just uh, cross the whole ship. This is a big ship, by the way. Uh, so we got our uh, we got grow plots 
quite a lot of them actually take a look at the grow plot count there but it looks like uh, 30 uh, 36 72 I'm guessing in that area and then we get up into uh, oh, medical bay over here wow look how wide this is oh and production wow Look at this whole area here. We must be center ships. So we got a couple deconstructors. Awful lot more room for more constructors or deconstructors uh, in the area. And then more medical on this side here. And then, man, we still. Okay, then we're right out the back side of the ship here. So we got another uh, way in and out over here. Let's get you into the medical bays. And production and farming was right up uh, as we were walking in here. So we had, this is like one side of the ship. So if we did have uh, 70, 72 grow plots there, we probably have another 72 on this side. Yeah. So uh, about 144 grow plots count so far. That does not actually go up. I thought it was going to go up there. What about these uh, elevators over here? No, they don't. Everything goes down. Except for this one. Okay, so I wanted to get up uh, and find the bridge. And I think we got to be getting close here. So we got a CPU core room in this uh, general area here. Looks like it uh, definitely has its core 9 uh, loadout in here. And places for a bunch of quantum cores, I would uh, assume. Quantum or auxiliary cores. A double, uh, a double block center on this ship, so... Uh, two elevators going up here. Oh, where does this go? Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't look like it goes anywhere. Um, let's go down then. Okay, so this is the bottom of this area. Yeah, we're back into production. And we can go down from here again. Oh, wow, look at this this corridor over here. Oh, wow. Just a lot of stuff going on in here. Another corridor. Wow. Okay, so there was another one on that on the other side there. We're going down the center. Very nice looking. Very nice looking. I like, like how these rooms are done. They, they look really, really cool here. We got some lights. Are some lights not on? I don't know if I want to hit the switch to fully turn them on, but yeah, I, I noticed that like that wasn't on. Like, um, it looks like the author did light up everything and it's got cool shadows and everything, but for some reason, the lights were not activated in this area. Yeah, I like this. Uh, these hallways uh, looking like that too. Very, uh, very unusual setup here. And that looks cool. God, we got another elevator over here. Going to uh, like a big oxygen area. That kind of loops back around to the other side, but I think this is all on one side of the ship because the, the center point would be over that way. Get a little lost. Apologize for that. <laughs> Alright, so up in here, we did have our warp drive, and we do have some balconies up here too. And blast doors. Oh, going into the uh, the big hangar section. And yeah, this is a big hangar section. I like how this is uh, done up with these center uh, pieces in the hangar, too. It's such a large hangar. You can get away with something like that and have, like, center structures in it. And obviously, uh, ways to come down in from the ceiling there, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. That's cool looking. Uh, yeah, it's like... Like graphic LCD, like you can see all the pixels in there. That is that is cool. That is cool. That's man. That's got to be a lot of um, LCD data in there because it has to have the position of every one of these uh, pieces in there to pull that off. That's cool. Actual like Photoshop graphics there, sort of. All right. So I've been trying to find my way to the bridge, and I don't know how to do that exactly yet. Maybe I'm not far enough back. Or, uh, I think I might cheat, though. 
I might cheat in a second and go from the bridge and figure out how it connects to the rest of the ship. So I was way off. I was away. This is such a wide body ship too. All right, so we're going to start at the bridge. I'll try to see how this joins to the rest of the ship. I'm sure it does. Um, I just didn't find the, the right place yet. So a cool looking bridge. Got a lot of crew members up here. Uh, a couple pilot seats right on the center. Passenger seats in the area. Med bay up here with a shower and all the uh, all the special stuff. Uh, it's cool looking black on the on that wall here. I like this block work going along the sides here too, with that texture light uh, row over around it. That just that looks really cool. Oh, and check this out. We've got a whole lot of information about the ship, about uh, upgrades and uh, all kinds of different things. So that that's really cool. So you got a big info uh, panel area here, uh, video tutorial link. Oh, that's cool. So that'll even uh, yeah even show you more in depth on how everything is set up and how it was arranged and working and what you can upgrade and all kinds of information. I bet. So armor locker and armor repair up here as well. Yeah, cool cool bridge area. I love the ceiling too. You see all the stuff going on up there. It is crazy. There is beams and deco and things and texture lights and yeah, just a lot of a lot of detail a lot of busy work going on in there looks really really good and it kind of goes down into this uh, uh, lower section on the bridge area and we got uh, our elevators back here which connects to this room oh I walked right past this before yeah this is right down to production so yeah, this is uh, this is where the elevators went up. For some reason, yeah, I got to here. I didn't know and got lost, but I had to get off right here. Okay, so that makes sense. So these elevators do go up there, uh, but I missed the uh, the opening here. All right. Yeah, that's very very cool. Very nice ship. Very nice ship. Big big uh, carrier. Star Wars based carrier. So let's take a look at some numbers on here. And I probably missed some uh, some rooms on the inside here too. But it is an enormous ship. Highly recommend checking it out. Uh, getting the, uh, the uh, blueprint off the workshop and uh, taking a good look at it. So uh, to start with here, we are size class 30. 33 forward, 8 strafing, 47 lift, 20 reverse, 20 down. 155 fuel tanks, 168 oxygen tanks. Uh, I got, uh, oh, these are all heavy miniguns on here. So seven or 16, excuse me, heavy miniguns, detector, long range radar, 33 hour and 39 minute build time. Uh, it's going to use quite a bit of parts and things like that. I did want to take a look at the shield though, too. I did not really. Okay. So we do have a shield at 19,600 stock. Uh, doesn't look like we have any P menu options over here. And uh, CPU wise, uh, it's it's uh, looks like it's balanced uh, how it comes here, but I wouldn't doubt that there are some um, cores in here. So it looks like we've uh, oh you know interesting. This is uh, a little confusing to me here. Okay, so it's not running any quantum or auxiliary cores, but it does have like doubled up set of basic and improved cores i didn't know you could do that um so the cpu is balanced but for some reason and i didn't think uh this was allowed having uh, two basics and four uh, improved cores in here but interesting setup i a little i'm a little confused at that i didn't know that was even possible but it it's working it's literally balancing out the cpu here and as far as I know, I, you know, the only thing it's complained about is the size class, and it will do that for any large size class thing. So I'm not really seeing any problems or anything like that. But that's that's interesting. I again, I didn't know that could even work. We do have a lot of uh, CPU and uh, crews, crew members as well too. So it looks like 64 total crew members on the ship, uh, which is going to provide some more CPU. Um, but yeah, again, very cool. Let's take a look at your storage. 
Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we are. So we've got, uh, looks like, two ammo controllers at 200k a piece. And... Um, Oh, yeah, these are, uh, okay, so these are all storage controllers down over here, too. A lot of these are boxes, I do believe, but we've got six of these, and it's kind of looking like they're all 640s. Let's get another sample. Yeah, I bet they're, yeah, so 600, uh, 640K uh, storage plus the uh, two 200K ammo bays, and then, of course, a lot of, a lot of boxes and other things going on in here. Uh, what's an inbox? Oh, wait, no, there's more than that. Some of the... So we got to in some of these are probably more big controllers uh, like that. Yeah, inboxes, um, outbox. So that would be eight six forties. Uh, is there any other unique looking ones in there? I don't think so. These would be definitely freezers, and those would be closets. So okay, so yeah, it looks like eight six forties. So you basically you're you're like in and out. Um, just called inbox and outbox in this case. So yeah, very, very cool. Very cool. A setup for good production, a huge amount of uh, uh, carrying capacity for HVs, SVs, uh, CVs that will uh, fit in the area. Um, a lot of stuff. Very cool shaping too. So again, this is the uh, uh, BFTC uh, Justicor by BFTC Sharpo. Very cool. And I think, I think this might be the first uh, creation I've seen by this author. This is really quite quite elaborate. Very, very cool creation there. Alright, so the next one here, we got to go into a, something a whole lot smaller here. We've got the uh, Valkyrie uh, RE by Ozfresh. And this is uh, like a little SV. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. Kind of looks like it would be more or less a starter type design i'm not seeing like anything that would be uh uh costing a lot of cpu or anything on here at the moment so we got a uh a gatling gun up, gun up front here i love this wing design that's cool i like how it's a, got the angle there and it kind of loops up around the back side it certainly reminds me of something or maybe it is uh something that you would see in star citizen um and it very well could be i'm just uh again i'm, I'm really out of date on star citizen on their on their ships i paid attention for a few years and but that was like years and years ago, and I'm really out of date on what they've got going on now with their their ships in that game. But yeah, that's a cool looking wing design. I like that. I like these uh, cross bra uh, brace supports over there too. That looks really neat. And it looks uh, again, it looks like it's uh, going to be a pretty low cost creation here. It's just running uh, pretty small thrusters, not much in weaponry on here. Uh, looks like more of a get around or early game uh, SV. Let's see what's uh, okay. So we've got uh, this is not interior, but it is utilities closet space here. That light's really bright there. Um, so we got a fridge in here, cargo box. Looks like we got a sensor. Uh, place for a constructor up top there. Nice indicator on the LCD there. Um, Yeah, that lights. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, a lot of utility in here. Armor, locker, O2, fridges, cargo boxes. Yeah, that's that's neat. That's a nice little setup there. You can just kind of park, uh, get out, and uh, take care of some things in the back of the ship there. Other than that, it's just running a uh, more of a prefab cockpit, the low profile one there. Give it a nice uh, angled slant there, like a Lamborghini windshield. <laughs> um, very very cool yeah, i like the uh the color design too i like the stripes that are going across uh the wings and also a little bit on the front area i'm really curious about though is its price it just looks like it's going to be pretty pretty cheap to get in the game here let's take a look at that so unlock level seven uh, definitely uh aligns with a starter there size class 0.54 42 forward 21 strafing 64 lift 42 reverse 21 down Two fuel tanks, four oxygen tanks, just a single Gatling gun and a detector. And there we go. Look at that. Super, super cheap. No no anything special at all. Nothing. Just iron, carbon, copper, and silicon. 42 minute and 25 second build time. 
So, yeah, great uh, starter thing. And it's quite maneuverable, too. If you look at the, the stats here and the pitch yaw and roll, uh, looks like it fly around quite nicely. And really, really low cost, really easy to get in game, pretty quick uh, for, for SV as well. CPU-wise, uh, yeah, just a basic CPU core. It even has about a uh, uh, good 750 leftover CPU. Uh, you can add some more things if you wanted to. Uh, no P-menu options over here. No shield. Didn't expect that. Uh, it, the cost wouldn't be this low if it had a shield. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Uh, agile, uh, very uh, inexpensive uh, starter type uh, SV just for general uh, getting around and maybe you can still shoot some uh, some uh, things, some drones and stuff along the way. Very, very cool. So again, this is the Valkyrie RE by Ozfresh. So the last creation today, uh, this is uh, uh, the Sky X, X, excuse me, well, speech impediment, uh, Sky Excavator RE by Wushaba, Wushaba, or W-H-U-S-B-A. Um, and this is a pretty unusual looking uh, ship over here. So with its name, I got to assume that this is a, uh, more of a uh, pretty hardcore miner, um, especially by its size and setup over here. So, yeah, look at all the uh, the mining drills going along the front here. I believe that's a lot of mining drills. Looks like we got some artillery cannons in the mix here, too, unless I'm mistaken that for something else. No, those are artillery cannons. And, yeah, a bunch of uh, laser mining drills. So we got, it uh, looks like, seven of them, them on the bottom side there. And what is this? Oh, we've got some uh, some landing gear. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder if this is kind of set up to dock to a different creation. Um, and the landing gear would uh, kind of, they should uh, come out this way, I think. Oh, they're actually extended right as they are. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, too, because there's like a little cutout right there. But, yeah, it's, it's, it looks neat. It looks neat. I um, I gotta assume that they're they're, they're for a reason, um, maybe on how it docks to another creation or something like that. And then let's see what. Oh man, I shouldn't have put the, that away so quickly. What do we got here? Okay, so these are actual weaponry. So we got some uh, heavy uh, positron beam turrets there, and. Uh, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of positrons, a lot of weaponry back over here. Okay, so yeah, this is for the dense mining here. So we got some asteroid extractor turrets. Okay, I was wondering about that. Looks like a six pack of these up here. So again, um, a lot of mining operations here. All automated ice harvest uh, turrets as well. So yeah, this thing is really set up to do kind of what the name suggests. Uh, sky ex excavator. Uh, so it's going to, yeah, just a big-time miner that can ha uh, mine all that uh, newer Reforge Eden-type uh, stuff with the dense mining, ice mining, um, plus standard mining. So pretty much all your mining needs here for a CV. And we, yeah, man, we even got some more stuff back over there. I think these are guns, so on the back side. A lot of, uh, a lot of protection as well from whatever you might encounter when you're out mining. Or even some offensive abilities, too. It did have some artillery cannons and things like that on it, too. So, yeah, that's cool. Cool look at our color scheme there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of texture lights going on. I like how the name is done on the sides over here. Um, and then you got that kind of double floor bridge on the front there as well. So, yeah, very, very cool. I like the shaping here. The texture lights really kind of set that off. Looks like we got a uh, Wi-Fi on the back there. Even a sentry gun back over there. So quite a few sentry guns around uh, the lower area of it. So if you're going to land on the ground like it is, give you some protection against uh, the wildlife or some pesky uh, Xerox troops or something. Yeah, cool looking shaping up here. I like how the... Uh, the texture lights kind of cut into the hall there, um, and a lot of uh, a lot of different things going on in, in this general area here. 
Very cool. So let me uh, let me find a way on board here. I was kind of looking around for that. Um, there's there's a way in. Oh, that's cool. It's all you're really well lit up there too. Let me get out of. Uh, let me uh, adjust the lights here again a little bit. And okay, so we get in here. It looks like we got long range radar as soon as we walk in. A couple of storage controllers. And then, uh, oh, so we got a blast door. And this is labeled core. And it certainly is. Look at that. Our main CPU core is over there. This would be some Xeno block over here, I think. Pretty, well, maybe not. Maybe not. It is a dual use texture, but no, it is, you know, it is, you know. So that's interesting how the blast door is done, too. It's kind of done in the long, long way. Well, actually, there's two blast doors here. Interesting. Um, okay, then we keep on going up the elevator here. Got this uh, this floor here. Looks like we got another floor above here. So a couple passenger seats here with a nice uh, front window display. And uh, oh yeah, this is this is convenient. Uh, quick access from outside of the ship, I guess indicated by the arrows on either floor. So that's cool. So yeah, when you're doing all this work here, you can really get quickly into the bridge area of the ship. Uh, that's 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 really cool. Actually, that's a nice feature. And then up to the uh, the top bridge area here. Cool looking glass work. Again, I like to see the some of these angles like that. That always looks really cool. And uh, yeah, more uh, quick entry doors to the bridge on the top side here. And it looks like we got some utility function right up in here too. A fridge and food processor. Uh, got a, sh a shower, armor locker. Got a way down there. I'll take that in a second. Uh, looks like we got uh, our rest of our med bay uh, equipment and the actual med bay on that side and uh, looks like a number of deconstructors over here looks like four deconstructors out in this area that's probably related to do with the kind of mining that it does I'm guessing I've never actually done that mining I suck but um, yeah so I gotta assume that's uh, that they would be a utility for the type of mining that this uh, ship can do and it looks like over here we've got our uh, another production area for a whole lot of small constructors, a couple advanced constructors uh, right in this area. And then right, right back to the bridge, right back to the the lower part of the ship. So, yeah, this is um, really set up for, uh, you know, a very specific function. Um, and that is a whole lot of uh, mining of a lot of different types, uh, ice mining, dense mining, regular mining, uh, deconstruction, probably salvaging. I'm sure it's part of part of the whole package. Uh, things like that. So yeah, if you're looking for a, a vessel to do those kinds of functions, it looks like this would do it quite well here. Um, at a pretty high uh, capacity as well. So let's take a look at some numbers here. So uh, 54 forward, 14. Hey, let's start up here. <laughs> Uh, size class is 4, um, unlock level 25, 54 forward, 14 strafing, 35 lift, 27 reverse, 15 down. Got six, uh, 16 oxygen, I'm sorry, 16 fuel tanks, 19 oxygen tanks, 22 hour and 14 minute build time. And we got a lot of, uh, a lot of equipment on here for the drilling and things like that, automated ice turrets, uh... It is using a fair amount of uh, zacosium and uh, estrium. Uh, it's using a decent amount of xeno um, in the build here too. So I gotta assume this is a pretty tough ship here. Let's take a look at uh, some CPU on here. So it is set up with a core nine setup. It will need additional CPU, uh, quantum auxiliary cores, crew members, hamster cores, whatever. Whatever works for that, so it would would want some more. It does. It's a pretty high end uh, miner. Uh, a lot of equipment on here, so I figured it was gonna need more CPU than uh, the Core 9 uh, setup there. So we have a 55 uh, 55k shield stock in here. Uh, looks like no P menu options. 
And uh, other than that, yeah, a bunch of a uh, bunch of equipment here. Let's take a look at the storages. Uh, so we've got uh, an ammo controller at 320k. Um, Looks like two regular controllers here, at one at 616 and the other at 640. Harvest controller at 320. Uh, then our protection tank and another 616K storage bay and another 640. So two 640s, two uh, 616Ks, plus another 320K harvest, 320K ammo. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of storage, especially for uh, mining um, obviously, it would go in the harvest bay. You could take that out, put it in one of the four uh, 600 plus K uh, storage bays on here. So, yeah, very, very cool ship. Very cool ship. And that is, again, the Sky Ex Ex <laughs> Excavator RE by Wooshba. Uh, very, very cool. And that is all the creations today. Yeah, I did uh, actually eight on this one. I normally do six or seven, but. There's just so many things, and some of them were small, but they were kind of counterbalanced again by some really uh, large creations as well that take uh, quite a bit longer to uh, go through. But, man, amazing work by everyone again, and all the, the attention to detail on these creations and uh, just the, the general appearance and artistic uh, design and all kinds of stuff going on here. Just some really, really cool stuff to see again. So glad to see it. Um, other than that, that is it for this video, and you all have yourself a great weekend, and I will talk to you later.